I can remember at a pretty early age, we went on some trip far away, you know, into the mountains where there weren't many lights. And I went outside at night and I looked up and I'd never seen that many stars. I, I couldn't leave. And I looked out and was reaching and just fascinated with what I saw and wondered how it worked. The reason Jupiter's so interesting is that after the sun formed, Jupiter was the first planet. And so when we want to go back and try to understand how the planets were made, I mean, where'd the stuff that made us come from? Jupiter kind of represents that first step. In a larger sense, it's really trying to understand nature, and we're part of nature. What is really going on? How do we understand nature? We have to look at it from an artistic perspective. We have to look at it from an analytical perspective. I think a lot of musicians are doing a similar kind of exploration, whether it be for themselves or for others. I remember looking out into the stars when I was a child and trying to work out the feeling, and it's this real mixture of sort of like fear and joy, I think, um, which I think is awe. I feel like a lot of my songwriting starts from trying to describe a certain emotion or a certain sensation or something I've seen, the way that you can look out into sort of vast, infinite space and how that can make you think about, you know, your own life and the life of your ancestors or the life of people on Earth, of how long we've been here, about what will be next. I'm curious about so many things, but I'm also curious about the unknowns. I've always been captivated by looking at space, just understand that I'm a part of it. I definitely think about it. Making music was my own personal thing. It was like my diary. The innovation comes from the combination of analytical and creative thought. Neither one can really make progress unless you've got both. Everybody's got to mix these worlds. The Renaissance in Florence. Galileo was this great scientist who certainly changed our culture forever. He came from a music background. There's people like Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci. I mean, you couldn't do Juno. You couldn't even think of the idea of going and doing a mission unless you had both halves of that. I'd say so many of the best musicians I know have both of those things, absolutely. They can trip out and be whimsical and romantic and lost, but they also are really technical and really nerdy and really clever and, and organized. And, uh, you know, music is repetition. You know, music is maths. And there's so many patterns in music. And if you were to explore the theory of music, you end up at pure maths. Anything can be put in equation form, and it's just a universal language. And music is everything, too. Nature sings. It makes music on its own. And if you go outside, crickets are singing songs, and birds are chirping. It's all boiled down to music. Sounds. Fundamentally, in nature, harmony is everywhere. I mean, it's just sort of built into the natural laws. So if I pluck a guitar string, that guitar string is going back and forth, vibrating. It's all tied to harmony and math called resonances, right? So something that's harmonically driven already sounds pleasant to us. Something that's disharmonic makes you kind of feel bad. We're in sync with that. Music and art are sort of experiments to me. It's just literally ideas, be as creative as possible, throw as, as many things against the wall as we can. Just try, fail, try, fail, try, succeed, kind of. And then, you know, keep trying until there's something that, you know, sounds good. You know, you go back into a studio and you really perfect it. And I'm always trying to find like that bar, that little tidbit that will make someone think a little bit, say something in a way that hasn't been said before. If one little thing, if one vocal, or if anything isn't right, I think it's unfinished and it doesn't work. 
I might hear a piece of music and it stimulates me to think of some other thought. And maybe it links to some science exploration that I go do. Or maybe it makes me think of something I want to create musically or artistically. And one of the interesting things is that, so Juno, it's going to arrive at Jupiter. But I want to know how the spacecraft's doing. I want to know how some sensors are doing. The whole spacecraft is set up to send down tones during this critical maneuver when we go into orbit. What they really are is musical notes that, based on what musical note is sent, how something's doing. Is it working well or is it not? And it's kind of interesting that it all comes down to musical notes, basically. You know, I love the fact that we live in a universe that's vibrating. I've been really lucky to hear some of the sounds from Jupiter that have been um, transferred into the part of the spectrum that we can actually hear. And there's or almost what you'd think of as electronic, which is really fascinating. Of course they are, you know, it's just waves. The music that we make that we think of as really contemporary is actually ancient music. We're tapping into ancient music. The urge to make music, which is prevalent in, you know, every single culture that's ever been, it's just an extension of these waves and these kind of vibrations being made by everything all the time. When we go to study art or we listen to music, or we study nature and go to the forest or try to understand the ocean. It's all sort of enabling us to learn about ourselves and understand others. We have all these different mechanisms to try to reach out and understand, and that's so powerful. Juno represents what we can create when you mix a lot of different people together, some more scientific, some more artistic, some more creative, some more analytical. And we can use that as an example of how humanity can do even more. When you're traveling, trying to make a song, you go through a bunch of unknowns, but there's like a destination in mind. What's something that could turn the world upside down and switch it up a little bit? There's challenges every day, but it's all about beating fear. It's just a choice that you have to make and saying like, I'm scared of this and I don't want to be anymore. It's, it's fulfilling curiosities. You're standing on the edge. It's just total unknown in front of you. Oh my God, you know, what's out there? And, I, and the only way to know is to go take a risk. I can't help myself but to take that step. I'm just human. I think music and just exploring, you know, is a really great way of finding out what's inside, which is sometimes, it is kind of scary, but it's important to listen to that quiet voice and see what is to be said. I really am curious to know um, what's in there.